All roads lead to the property show happening on the 27th and the 28th of August 2022. The show will be in Centon Convention Center as well as virtually. So you can join from anywhere you are in the world. Tickets are still available at thepropertyshow.co.za. So tonight we are having a good conversation that you would definitely want to take part in. But before we get into that conversation, remember to engage with us. Send us your comments, send us your property related questions, and you could win 500 Rand cash by also sharing that post. And winners of that 500 Rand cash will also stand in line to win tickets to the property show so tonight i'm sitting with somebody who is no stranger to the podcast i'm sitting with luanda Tota limaje thank you so much for joining us thank you very much for so inviting me you are a transactional broker at galaxy real estate and this is something that you are really passionate about so um, before we jump into our conversation just tell us um what exactly does a transactional broker do and why is it such a passion for you i guess when you understand the property space and you see a lot of people making mistakes every day mm. you can't help yourself but you want to assist them and also we are a highly regulated um, mm. industry so you actually want to always guide them so that they never make the same mistakes sure and how long have you been doing this and um, as I as I asked in terms of passion you know it, it really goes beyond just mm. um, helping people make these transactions you literally you're literally giving people a home so um, how long have you been doing how long have you been doing it and um, how has it impacted your life and the life of others well you know it's um, certain things that you do you never realize the part that you're playing until somebody comes to say thank you yeah um and uh, sometimes you are faced i mean i'm on the sales and auctions team um at galetti so sometimes you go see a property mm -hmm. so that you can auction it and you find that you know there's a way that you can actually help the client or the you know the person who is in who is having problems with the bank to meet their payments sure you find that there is a way that you can assist them and you end up because you, you become very conversational and you end up wanting to help them not to lose the property yeah so sometimes it's not about the deal but it's about making sure that you the company is very well represented sure and you know you have a very strong financial background so um one would think or assume you work for a bank rather so why did you choose a corporate agency and um how how has that changed in terms of your your career path mm. all right so i spent over 24 years i'm not trying to give away my age <laughs> <laughs> um in investment banking and that was um a wonderful experience um mm. understanding the economy of the country um, just understanding the vibe of what, you know, makes South Africa uh, a great beat, you know, of um, and, and a sense of how the economy works. Mm. So a friend of mine, in fact, maybe just to go back a little bit. Um, so 2020, I wanted to start my own little spaza shop mm. and I actually resigned from my job. Um, uh, um, I was working for an asset management company okay. and I was a business development manager there and I thought, oh, you know what? I'm done with banking. I've been doing this for so long, mm. so I need a change. Maybe if I could start my own consultancy. Mm. And unfortunately for me, I was finishing my resignation in February uh, 2020 and on the 24th uh, mm. of March, then bam, mm. they yeah. told us the news and there was no way of spending money on something that you don't even know whether mm. it, I mean, we didn't even know when the markets were going to open. Sure. So eventually um, I started, you know, calling some of my old friends, you know, some of the companies that I knew were struggling with finance or maybe raising capital for their small businesses. Mm. Um, but obviously they were very reputable. They had built so much um, mm. into their businesses, but obviously they needed to grow. So I spent March until November um, just marketing myself my consultancy and see what would be the low-hanging fruit sure and one of my friends called me um in 2020 asked me to come and have coffee with him so i went to do coffee with him and when i went for coffee it wasn't a coffee discussion <laughs> but he wanted me to come and assist him with his business mm. and i said but you know i don't know anything about um selling properties mm. and he said to me listen if you've done lending if you've um closed deals if you've worked on projects i mean i've worked on 
volumes and volumes of projects and mm. I've been lucky enough to be exposed. Um, so he said to me, listen, this is not um, rocket science. So sure. come through, let's, 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 let's discuss it, but I need you to be here full time. You can park your consultancy for a little bit mm. and I can teach you the ropes. And that's how I started sure. 2020. <laughs> and, and you're here two years later and you are now a transactional broker. And for somebody who doesn't really understand, you spoke a little bit about how you are right. You are currently in the auctions and, and sales, right? So just maybe take us through how that looks, what um, some of the transactions that you encounter look like, and what are some of the mistakes that you spot, especially in the property space, you know, for being somebody who has a strong financial background, you know, you know, when people are making mistakes, especially when you're coming in with a fresh eye. So what are some of those mistakes that you've spotted compared to other in industries, or even just generally in terms of what those mistakes that happen in the property industry? Overpricing. <laughs> <laughs> have, you know, we become very emotionally attached to mm. the property and yeah. uh, sometimes you, you realize that there's a problem and you need to resolve this problem so that um, it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, bury you. So yeah. you want to sell so that you can pay your bank and move on. Mm. But I find that there's so many properties which have gone to auction. I mean, there's properties that I have come across that have been to at least four auctions and they still haven't sold. And I mean, that's the same question that I ask, like mm. what happened? Why didn't it sell? Yeah. So those are very important questions. So I like to do my own comparisons. I mean, Galeti, we have a whole team broking mm. Um, sales and then we've got uh, GCS as well mm. so the team it's like an open plan we use a hot desk so yeah. you can literally just go to anyone and find out so how do I do this what do, how does this area uh, perform mm. compared to this other area so the brokers also have certain areas that they work at so those numbers are readily available it's mm. not rocket science so I will go through the comparison sit down with the client make them understand mm. if they believe that I can their property they will give it to me and um at the rate that we have discussed mm. otherwise uh we have to sometimes we have to cut our losses it's sad because mm. you want the commission yeah. but you know that you're going to waste so much time holding a property trying to sell it and yet it's not sellable sure and and what advice would you give to somebody who is a first time home buyer you know they're coming into the market for the first time and um you you've maybe dealt with some of these transactions before what are some what is uh, some of advices that you could give them yeah, speak to the bank <laughs> you know speak to your banker go to the bank even if you don't have a banker visit mm. them just find out what you're up against i mean right now we've got um um, the internet where you can literally put in what like you can stress test um, or do your pre-approval just to see how much you can afford when you want to buy a property mm -hmm. involve a, go to a real estate agency try to involve them tell them what it is you're looking for these people are there to help you they're not yeah. there to just take commission and I know mm -hmm. sometimes um, I, I, we try to run away from paying commission that mm -hmm. commission it's a saving grace for many people yeah no sure you know um when we talk transactional um brokerage or uh, brokering a lot of people think you're just adding another player no. <laughs> to this big mess you know and i'm trying to just get a property so why would you say it's important for one to have a transactional broker when they are starting a process of getting a home or even a property maybe the person is an investor and you know investors want to make sure that they spend less and you yes. know uh, increase uh, their returns so um what is uh, that advice that you would give them to say this is the reason why you need a transactional broker for this so the process um like i said it's a very regulated a highly regulated uh process that you go through mm. and the reason you need a transactional broker there's um jargons that you come across in these yeah. um, um mandates mm. or in the agreement and mm. you are struggling to uh, like to even relate what it is that they want from you i've seen people um sign offer to purchases the ones that they buy from pna and i I wonder, like, okay, if you sign these agreements, you don't even understand what's in the agreement. Mm. How well do you think this agreement is going to represent you when somebody has um, taken off with your money? And it's not like we don't know that people have lost so much money trying to do private sales um, friend to friend. Um, it doesn't work. Mm. So try to use the professionals. We are regulated. We are on the system. You can even do your own homework to find out who Luanda is and mm. what Luanda can help you with. And we act in um, assisting the buyer and the seller. Mm. 
Mm. So the transactional broker sit, sits in, in between. The yes. And when it comes to um, the types of um, properties maybe th that you engage in, are we talking only residential or, or, or commercial or is it both? Is it just any property that one has? So at Galeti we focus mainly on commercial. Okay. So it will be your um, office space, a retail, mm. petrol stations, mm. uh, industrial properties, you name it. Yeah. Um, when we have residential, it's usually a, like a, a packaged parcel of residential properties. Mm. Um, we try to not represent uh, residential because it's not our space, because we've, our strength is more on commercial. Sure. And if, if somebody is, is going in for a residential, I understand that Galeti just does that, um, the commercial side. But if I'm going into farming or going into a residential farming, do I still need a transactional broker or is it just really for huge deals? No, you actually do because you still have to go through the agreements. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ha you know, signing an offer to purchase is not all of it. Yeah. You still have to go see the conveyancer. You've got some documentation. Um, I mean, you have to understand what the property holds sometimes you don't even know the type of zoning what it restricts you from doing mm. so you don't want to buy a property and then you find that the ideas that you had for that farm you cannot actually put them through uh, council and mm. they cannot be approved by council because of the state of what that piece of land is a, like is, is 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 zoned for yeah mm -hmm. and let's talk about uh, property investors somebody who's watching us today and is, is a property investor and wants to you know pivot their their uh, property portfolio what are some of the advices that you would give them in terms of uh getting an, a, transa a transactional broker on board in terms of their team and them understanding a little bit more how to grow it what advice would you give them okay so people must never get intimidated by titles yeah all right people must um learn to speak their mind and speak their piece and understand what it is that they putting themselves into mm. if somebody wants to invest in property i as a transactional broker i also need to understand what do you want to do with the property so there's there'll be um, a string of questions that i will ask and from those questions i'm able to understand what your needs are and how you're trying to um, what are you trying to achieve? Mm. So my main role is to understand what you're looking for and present you with what it is that you're looking for. Sure. No, thank you so much for that. Really great insights that we are receiving tonight and really, really appreciate it. Uh, before we conclude, funny question. If you were to receive 10 million rand right now with, with your expertise and with your experience, what would you do with it? Well, um, I would invest it. In fact, I would invest in... Um, so if 10... 10 million rand, it sounds like a large sum of money, yeah. but when you start shopping around, you realize <laughs> that it's not necessarily that much. Sure. But it's always best to look for an income proper, like in income generating property that yeah. can actually help you to pay off your um, your lending from, from yeah. the bank. Sure. Because um, sometimes we just go with eyes closed that I want that property. It's not about I want that property. Mm. Check the numbers understand the numbers understand how they relate to your square your rate per square meter mm. the property the position you know you have to understand all of those things food security is another <laughs> one of my passion as well because sure. i have been looking at how you know some of your big um uh, uh um, like your pick and pay yes, your checkers yeah. and uh, super spa yeah. they're growing every day mm. and they are you know expanding and sure. now they're partnering with some of the funds to say mm. okay this is the type of uh, property that I need because we need to have like immediate access when it comes to uh, whatever uh, food storage that they need to to use it for mm. so I find uh, food security for me is very important so if you have a warehouse you can never run dry because sure. there's always somebody who's looking for storage to store their dry goods sure now, thank you so much for that any closing words as we round up today's conversation yes so if you want to talk to um, uh, a broker mm -hmm. I mean if there's anything that like inspired you I mean um, Galeti does a whole lot of um, I mean we have a uh, we have a geo mapping system mm -hmm. so that system it helps us to map the entire you know um south africa mm. and we can tell you where properties are 
where investment properties are, where yeah. vacant land is. So you don't have to do it by yourself or sure. maybe go on Google. We mm. have the systems to do that. I mean, we look after uh, properties, like a portfolio, like tenant portfolio. Mm. We do leasing. We also um, do sales and auction, like I have said. Mm. And I mean, yes. And the list goes on and on. Well, thank you so much. And really, really does show the importance of having a transactional broker because you bring in so much great expertise. I mean, if you ask me what I'm going to do with 10 million rand, I might just say I'm buying my dream home. <laughs> but you were talking so uh, um, things that would really, really help somebody, you know, who who needs uh, and who ha who needs those expertise at the right time. Correct. Thank you so much for joining us and no, have a good you. one. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for you for for tuning in till we get to this part of the episode. We really, really appreciate it. And thank you for um, sending those questions, sending those comments and sharing. The winner of tonight's competition or yesterday's competition rather will be announced in the comments section and make sure that you don't miss out on that. Until the next time we see you, remember to get your tickets at the propertyshow.co.za. Thank you so much for joining us and have a good night. This year, we're back in real life and virtual with content generated in our Metaverse studio. We've designed the exhibition space to replicate the world's most popular property game and added in activities for the whole family, including an indoor park and play area. The game board is divided into four journeys, namely First Time Home Buyers Boulevard, Investment Avenue, Sellers Street and Renters Road. Visit thepropertyshow.co.za for more information and to get your tickets today. The Property Show 2022, 27th to the 28th of August at the Santon Convention Center. No matter where you are on your property journey, we've gathered the experts.